Hello, my name is Nina williams Teramachi. I use they-them pronouns, and I'm the new musical producing associate, so all things new works at the Fifth Avenue Theater. And I'm so excited to introduce you to the team of Yoko's husband's killer's Japanese wife, Gloria, um, Claire, Erica, and Brandy, uh, who are our fabulous writing team who's joining us for First Draft, Raise Your Voice. Hi, y'all. I'm Erica, Erica G. Uh, I use she, her pronouns, and I am the composer of this team. I'm Claire Bierman, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the lyricist on this project. I'm Brandy Huang Collier. I also use she, her pronouns, and I am the book writer. Thank you so much. Uh, So I would love to hear a little bit about what this show is. What's it about? So the name of the show is Yoko's Husband's Killer's Japanese Wife, Gloria. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, We were inspired by like the fact that Mark David Chapman had a Japanese wife. (laughs) And, um, you know, the story that we tell of like how this information came into our world is like, I was, you know, it, it was we found out in reverse. Like I was Googling murderers and reading about Mark David Chapman. I was like, did this dude have an Asian wife? And then he did. And that was very interesting (laughs) that I could call that. Um, So we started researching Gloria Abe Chapman and Yoko Ono and just like their worlds. Um, And now we've started building a show kind of around like our relationship to that story um not so much like you know a biopic or anything it's like historical fiction and we're diving into like our relationship our relationship to that story and how what happened to Gloria Abe and things that happened to Yoko Ono how that affects like Asia America and you know I obviously you're writing about real people and big public figures, in fact. And so what I'm curious about, if you could speak a little bit to um, some challenges uh, about writing about real people in a musical theater context. I think one of the challenges that we definitely started with was the fact that these are both women that we care a lot about, frankly, and we really care about, we, we've seen how society has been kind of so unfair to both of them. I mean, like, you know, for anyone growing up in the USA, like the narrative around Yoko Ono is unbelievably uh, cruel from a bunch of people who think she broke up the Beatles. But regardless, I think it's like, we came from a place of being so, uh, wanting to be so careful and so kind to them uh, as characters. Um, And I think that led to us being like, kind of tentative, you know, in our writing process, because that it, it's, you don't want to, you know, drama and theater is created around like characters being put through tribulations. And we're all like, these women have been through enough. They don't need us putting them through more. Um, so what we ended up having to do was sort of, um, as Brandy was saying, like move away from the idea that we're like writing the show of them and writing about them and encapsulating them and really move towards looking at at their story as how it as how we as Asian Americans um move through like uh this world and how the same uh kind of systems that impact them and 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 led them to have to deal with these really unfair circumstances that how those systems also impact us and impact like all Asian people in America um and once we started looking at their stories as a way of like looking more at at us and how our experiences can line up with theirs. I think it really opened up a lot for us in terms of how we, uh, how we write about these characters. Um, Because we're fine with putting people like ourselves through tribulations. We deserve it. (laughs) We haven't been through things like them. Thing that gets really exciting about this show is whenever I tell someone about this show, I say the name, and people have a reaction always. It's a it's a spicy name, uh, and I feel comfortable saying that because I didn't come up with it, so I can just celebrate <laughs> the name all I want um, in a way that I wouldn't do with my lyrics. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's an it's the title itself just makes people go like, huh, 
what's it? Wait, what? What's that about? And then like, I think the thing that we keep being drawn towards in our material in the show is like any kind of experiences that we have, especially because like, I think, I mean, for me, definitely this is the first time working with two Asian women and like getting to put all of our experiences in this like room together and going like, hey, this is something that happened to me and I never really thought about it. And like, huh. And then Erica and Brandon will be like, wait, what? And then we'll all like double click on that thing and be like, I, I don't, I don't know what that's about. And then all of those times that we're usually like filing away things and like forgetting about it, we get to like pull those things out, put them in the room with each other and like kind of blow them up uh, in our writing. And that's been a super fun process. And I think it's been like a great way to like bring, bring some value to these things that usually, you know, you would just file them away and not really think about, but in this group of people, we really get to uh, explore them in, in a lot more depth here. And it feels very special. Well, and to, you know, just as I'm, I'm using this, this is my therapy as I meet up with <laughs> Claire and Erica and I tell them all the weird things that have ever happened to me. But the other thing with what Claire is saying, you know, just to put like a very fine point on it is like, you know, being in the room with two other Asian women is like a rare and special experience. Well, it's not rare anymore because I've made I've designed my whole life around it because I love it. Um, but yeah, that's the great thing. Like, like what Claire is saying is like, there's things that's like, why could I, based on Mark David Chapman's life, like, why did I know he was married to an Asian? You know, it's taking those things from our life that are just kind of like, huh, and being able to put them out into the room and like, let's all discuss instead of just like me thinking about it. Um, about this thing that like happened to me once and so it's nice to have you know like a like a council talking about these things to protect each other from like you know like internalized racism and stuff like being able to say out loud like oh should I just write that off and if I were just thinking about it myself I might say yes and then having two other Asian women in the room are like no that was weird you were right to think that was weird no thank you and I'm glad y'all have each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're glad um, too. <laughs> and, you know, I think that uh, it gives me a great transition into just talking a little bit more about this process as a whole. Um, I guess I'm just curious to hear, it, it sounds like we, we heard a little bit, but what, what's what been something that's really excited or surprised you about this process so far? So as a writer, <laughs> you take a topic, you know there's a story there. And it seems so specific. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to, this is obviously what the story is, beginning, middle, and end. And then once you do that, you're like, ah, or these 25 different things. And that's been something surprising, I think, is, you know, I won't get too into it because we're we're in process, as you know. Um, but we have found a new way into the story that I am very surprised by that I'm really excited about. I think it really reflects the fact that there are three people in the room um, because it's something I don't think I ever would have thought of on my own. And I think we all like needed each other for this, uh, but it's surprising to like, to open up like a historical event. And, you know, we say we're gonna do like historical fiction and then it starts turning into like, oh, there's, a hundred other stories that we could weave through this. I feel like we're even veering more into like fiction with like glances at a historical event. You know, it, it's, I'm very surprised by um, the, the story we've discovered, uh, the best way to tell it. Yeah, I'm like trying to figure out too, it's like how much of this to share or not, just because it's like, we're still yeah. so much in process that like, I may say like, this is what it's about now. And it's like, actually tomorrow we'll decide it's um about a slightly <laughs> different thing. But you know, you know, with our title, right? Yoko's Husband Killer's Japanese Wife Gloria. If that's the title of the show, the show is about Gloria, right? And so I think our first instinct was to really dive into who is Gloria? What is her story? Um, and we discovered this really incredible woman who's, faith is so powerful um, and wh whose um, love for God and love for her partner has led to uh, an incredible life. Um, and, you know, I think we, we could have told such a beautiful story just about Gloria 
And then we dug into Yoko and we were like, Yoko also has this incredible power as an artist, as like a social force. Um, and, and we could have told an entire story about her life. Right. And then we looked at, it was like, what, what is it that really connects Gloria and Yoko? Um, and it was so fascinating that these two women who were both so incredible ended up being linked by this event that connected their white husbands. Right. Um, and, and I think what started to emerge for us was it was like, it seems like here are these two otherwise like incredible independent humans who are brought together by this weird circumstance, right? And like, what does it mean that we are grouping them together and why, right? And it's like, if you ask Gloria or Yoko, it's like, do they feel kinship to one another? Would they say yes or no and why? Um, and I think that started raising some interesting questions around it's like, you know, in general, like, what does it mean when different Asian Americans are grouped or not grouped, right? Um, and this whole concept of Asian American itself being like something that I believe came about because there was, um, I believe it was a Chinese person who was killed because of anti-Japanese sentiment, right? And it became like, a well, it seems like we look enough like each other that our interests are shared. Right. And so I think there's like something about this, like, why are we getting grouped or ungrouped? When is that something that we want or don't want? Um, and how does that affect us today? Right. Um, and so we, I, we're like starting to explore this question in terms of generations, too, where like we're noticing that um, in different generations, there are both di different and similar responses. Right. Where. Um, you know, like the desire to assimilate might look different in our parents' generation or in our generation, right? Um, or the desire to be somehow like fiercely, um, what's like the word for for patriotic, but like- Like nationalistic. Uh, na like, yes. like nationalistic, but about like your respective Asian heritage, right? Like what does that look like in our parents' generation or in our generation as we as we see it in our, in our community? Um, and- um, and I think some interesting things emerge. And 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 I, I, I think the hope too for us is that like, you know, maybe that we make some sense of where we fit into this as well. Um, and to recognize sort of like how how like how the shape, how how sort of the shape of race and society has shaped sort of where we are and who we are, and you know, why is it that like why is it that we've chosen to make art and to make art about race right now? Um, so yeah, I guess to, I, don't, I don't, like to, to come back to your question, but it's like, sort of like, what is exciting us and surprising us? I feel it's just like, we're continually like learning more and diving deeper. And it's interesting how, what sort of started as this study of two incredible women ended up also being about why are they even being brought together and what does, how does that relate to us and how we are being brought together now? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think kind of on that topic around like how we're brought together and why we are coming together. And like, you know, of course, like looking at these two women who, yeah, I don't think they would group themselves together um, if given the option, but that it's like, there is clearly something about like the three of us, Asian women who are like really gravitating towards one another and kind of like getting to explore within ourselves and with, within our group, like, you know, what are the things that feel like really magnetic about like all of our situations? Where are the times that we're like, I never had that, never didn't know that one. Um, my mom was like this or whatever. Um, and then also I think definitely one of the most exciting moments for me was um, at the at the very beginning of our process and we were uh, all together and kind of talking about just like our journeys into writing and to into creating theater. And all three of us said the same thing, I think kind of without thinking about it being a similar thing, but we were all kind of saying like, oh, you know, I was kind of late into it. You know, I was starting on this other career. I was doing, you know, in, in all our respective careers, we started other careers and then came to writing afterwards. Um, and I think that felt really significant to me because I was like, well, you know, the three of us, Asian women who started off on a separate path. You know, I don't think there was a reason for us to think for a long time that people like us would be able to be, you know, theater makers, to be writers. Uh, uh, and um, 
have whatever, whatever things later in our life caused us to like come to that realization that it's like, that's awesome. And it would be even more awesome if that had happened 10 years earlier for us, you know, like where would we be if we, if we had discovered that uh, a little bit earlier. And I think realizing that it's like the things that we do, hopefully at some point someday might like tell another like Asian woman that like, there is a place for you in the, in, in the, in the arts, in the theater, all this stuff that, you know, maybe they, they wouldn't have seen before, or at least like, you know, when I was a kid that I wasn't seeing very much. And um, yeah, so I think it was just a really exciting and on, and kind of like um, harrowing moment of going like, we all didn't think we should be here for a really long time. Uh, and and so getting to you know share with these women the fact that like we we do belong here and, and we and we have something to say and feeling like we have, we feeling like we have something to say and 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 the opportunity to say it it, it just feels like like a, a huge opportunity and big responsibility frankly. I guess I'm just curious, um, and I think folks would love to hear as to what your experience has been like uh, writing for first draft. Honestly, a dream. Um, it's interesting because um, I've uh, been having some conversations with other folks who are like interested in starting new works programs and things like that. And, um, you know, they'll ask different questions about it's like, oh, like, you know, what are like, how do you feel about this certain these certain sets of priorities or, you know, how do you handle these things? And I was like, oh, you know, actually, like one of the beautiful things about first draft has been that. Um, it feels like it's so custom to like what we especially need in any moment, right? I think we've gotten like whatever that particular kind of support is, whether it's in terms of dramaturgy or in terms of, you know, resources in order for us to to do our writing. Um, there's, it, it feels like there's so much like genuine flexibility and sort of like attention and care for like, what is it that we need in our creative process? that it's, it just, we feel so genuinely supported. It's a, it's a really, truly beautiful thing. <laughs> um, and, and rare, which is maybe not a good, the, the rare part is not a good thing, but it's truly a rare and beautiful. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think one of the, you know, the support is incredible and honestly, like a little bit like, I, you know, like being, I, I, I feel like I'm early career, I mean, obviously it would be insane for me to say anything else. I'm an early career and like, I just feel like I, you know, hit the jackpot um, being able to work on this project with the fifth. And one of the things that I think, one of the great credits I think to the first draft program is that, um, and I think the other writers in the program would have no problem with me saying this, is like, we're all writing kind of like weird shows. And <laughs> I feel like- <laughs> this idea, this idea that came from like basically just like crazed text messages in the night <laughs> that I sent to Claire and Erica that they were like, well, if you want to write the show, like let's write the show. It was the kind of thing that in my head I was like, oh, that would be like my dream show to write if I could get people crazy enough to like support it. You know, like I, I it was the kind of thing where I was like, I would love to write that, but I feel like it would probably have to be put off until I had more of a name for myself um, because who's going to produce this kind of thing? Um, and I think that's one of the great things. Um, and also looking at the other shows, um, which I'm really excited for uh, in, in First Draft is like, because they're all like clearly like weirdo dream shows and they're all like very different from one another. Uh, I feel like that in itself fosters a feeling of like y'all aren't looking for a specific thing like we don't have to fit into a box to be successful here um and that's a really great feeling too yeah we are crazy and we <laughs> <love the> <laughs> and it all comes from a genuine place as well yeah yeah um thank you thank Maybe you in the same way <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like when we when we submitted our pitch to, we were like, this pitch is insane. And yeah. if, <laughs> if if they don't like it, we're okay with it. But if they like it, it means that they're crazy too. <laughs> and, and so I yeah. think it was like it was interesting because it was like a, a weirdly enough, our pitch ended up being a little bit of a dare, which is like, are you are you also yeah. as crazy as we are? But you know, it's like we were being ourselves and saying, like, well, if y'all, if 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 we're all gonna get along, then I think that's that's gonna be beautiful. And so I think when when after seeing that pitch, y'all were like 
actually we're we're interested in this tell us more we're like oh we think these can be our people and so we've been yeah we've been really lucky yeah. yeah Nina I don't know if you remember the like bizarre like visual <laughs> I was just about to bring that up <laughs> <laughs> can you can you please t- tell our audience what that is what, oh yeah, I mean you can show us you can show a, a screenshot yeah. of it or something too, it. if you want. If that's Editor, your editors, editing. Going. Yeah, um, we wrote but, what can only what looked like a letter that the Joker would send to a hospital <laughs> before he blew it up. Um, <laughs> this is a group that's a big fan of fonts. This is what I know about my friends here in this room love fonts, love <laughs> the love visual communication, something that a lot of musical theater writers do not think about at all. Uh, so it's something that I think will really make you stand out if you're a musical theater writer, if you're listening. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, like, I, I remember it this, like, nine months later, and I still think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, it came from the heart. It, it, it did, and it, like, it was truly just us, like, in a room or a Zoom room together, like, all working on the same Google Doc, all like truly daring each other to do the next yeah. thing where someone was like, what about wingdings? And someone else was like, yeah, put it. And then <laughs> someone else like drew a small dis- like box and someone like put words in the box and it was like out of the box. And, um... <laughs> yeah, if it dares a good word, it was kind of like a, a prank, but you know, from the soul, like that's really what we wanted to put. It started as like a joke of like, what if we did it like this? And then we all just kept going. And I remember like calling them back that night, calling Claire and Erica back later that night. And I was like, wait, like, okay. We were like, like I was, we were real, <laughs> we were all pumped up and we submitted that. And I, I don't, that was kind of a crazy choice for us to do. And, and, you know, and Claire and Erica, again, having three people in the room, they were like, if they like it, they like it. Also, I should say, this was our artistic statement and our synopsis had sentences in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the artistic <laughs> statement is where we kind of did our creativity. And then the part where it's like, here's where the show is. We, we, we used sentences and words in that in a more yes, traditional Yes, we did not sense. use windings. Um, yeah. <laughs> tell us the story, Glavi. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>